I'm Todd Neal with MedPage Today. It's well known that there are higher rates of sleep disordered breathing in patients with traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. But there are few data looking at these issues among U.S. soldiers returning from the current conflicts in the Middle East. So Dr. Jacob Collin of Walter Reed National Military Medical Center and colleagues took a closer look. Um, among patients with traumatic brain injury, there was a breakdown by mechanism of injury. So patients with blast injuries, such as from um, improvised explosive device blasts, had a higher rate of insomnia and anxiety. And patients with blunt injuries um, demonstrated a higher rate of obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis. And blunt trauma was an independent predictor for obstructive sleep apnea in our population after accounting for other risk factors and clinical variables. And we looked at our PTSD cohort we found that the difference broke down by presence or absence of injury. So there was an increased rate of obstructive sleep apnea in patients who were non-injured as opposed to the injured group. So what we theorized from that, um, and we don't have data to support this yet, but basically that uh, non-injured patients uh, potentially have a higher rate of OSA because potentially they may have had undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea prior to deployment. And so obstructive sleep apnea that's undiagnosed or not treated may act as a risk factor for PTSD. So potentially these patients have less physiologic reserve. And this has been shown previously in some other studies, primarily looking at upper airway resistance syndrome in veterans' populations. Collins said that all soldiers returning with a traumatic brain injury or PTSD should have a comprehensive sleep evaluation. Our feeling um, is that all these patients should be referred for a sleep evaluation um, of some sort as part of their post-deployment health screening. So in addition to questionnaires, they should probably have a consultation with a sleep doctor to evaluate whether they're having subjective sleep complaints and look for risk factors that could indicate that they have an actual sleep disorder like uh, obstructive sleep apnea or post-traumatic hypersomnia or narcolepsy um, or insomnia or any of these other diagnoses. Um, in many cases what happens is soldiers get sent for an initial sleep evaluation they get polysomnography which shows that they don't have sleep apnea and then they're, that's the end of the evaluation and these patients continue to be tired and have excessive daytime somnolence and um, kind of decreased performance and so you know after the sleep apnea evaluation is done and potentially negative and these patients should have um, you know further studies such as multiple sleep wake, multiple sleep latency tests and maintenance of wakefulness tests and just a further more comprehensive sleep evaluation if their symptoms continue I mean in some cases a questionnaire may be enough to screen out a soldier uh, but I think they should have a definite sleep evaluation from Honolulu I'm Todd Neal MedPage today